In this video, we will be going over how to use RefTech's mobile bending app. This app makes it easy to design complex pipe configurations and then bend the copper in real life to precisely create the designed configuration. The app can be downloaded in either the Google Play Store for Android or the Apple App Store for iOS. Simply search for RefTech and it should show up as Bend Designer. We will go ahead and install the app on our device. Upon initial launch of the app, it will first ask you to scroll down and accept the terms and conditions, essentially saying RefTech is not responsible for wasted materials or labor if there is a bug in the app that incorrectly calculates how the tubing should be bent. Next, you'll find yourself on the landing screen of the app with a picture of RefTech's Digibender. This app is specifically designed to work with the backformers included with RefTech's Digibender kit. To start designing your layout, let's click Configure Tube. Quick note, as is, the current version of the app works best with a specific workflow. Future versions of the app will allow more flexibility, but for now, you will have a better experience following the workflow we will discuss in this video. The first step is to set the initial angle. This determines the initial direction of the tubing. Allowable input values range from 0 to 359 degrees, and the resulting direction corresponds with this picture. From the origin, 0 degrees will go to the right, 180 to the left, 90 up, and 270 down. This step is not necessary, but it can be helpful to visualize the layout on the app in the same orientation it will be installed on the project. We'll go with the default 0 degrees to have the tubing start to the right. Next up is to select the tube size. This is based on OD of the tubing. To the right of each tube size is the model of the corresponding bender. As RefTech's DigiBender currently has formers for 5 8 through 1 and 3 8 of an inch, the smaller sizes of quarter through half can be bent with a small lever type hand bender called the Imperial 370 FH. Quick tip, if running two or more parallel lines, which is often the case for VRV, VRF projects, start by selecting the largest tube size. This can save time as we will show later. For this example, let's start with 1 and an eighth inch tubing. Next is to select the insulation thickness, if any. You may be wondering why this is relevant or useful, but we can use this to take advantage of the app's built-in edge detection to simplify the measuring and dimensioning process. We'll get into this shortly. Let's select one and a half inch insulation as if we are installing a VRV VRF hot gas line. The next step is to add all of our bends to get the basic layout of what we're looking for. For this example, let's say we're running the pipe along the ceiling and we've got either a truss or sprinkler line that we have to duck down and back up to avoid. A 45 degree crossover bend should do the trick. Let's start by clicking Add Bend. Set the angle to 45 and click the direction toggle to go clockwise rather than counterclockwise. You can see the initial tubing is going to the right of the origin because of our zero degree initial angle, and we just added a 45 degree clockwise bend as expected. Let's add another 45 degree bend but in the counterclockwise direction. And another counterclockwise, 45. And one last clockwise, 45. This gets us to the basic layout we were hoping for. This is a good time to go over a few quick tips. You can pinch to zoom and reverse to zoom out. You can press and drag to move the tubing around the screen. If you ever need to start over with a blank slate, you can access the menu in the top right and select Delete Tube. If you accidentally added one too many bends, you can click Delete Bend to remove the most recently added bend. Let's say an angle was just entered incorrectly. To fix it, we can simply click on the bend that we want to update and either change the angle or direction. Please note that it's important to make these updates prior to the next steps of dimensioning the tubing. Alright, time to start dimensioning the layout. 
you'll notice there are dimensions by default. For angles 90 degrees or less, these dimensions are referenced to their center lines, and by default, the straight sections, of which I will refer to as segments moving forward, are the shortest length possible that the bender is capable of. To change dimensions, we need to click on a straight segment that we want to stretch or elongate. Let's start with the second segment. You will notice a bunch of yellow dots before the straight section and a bunch of green dots on the bend directly after the straight section. These are all of the different reference points we can choose to dimension from. We can choose any one yellow dot and any one green dot. And let's choose the two that have the most real world meaning, and thus probably the easiest to measure in real life. As we are running along the ceiling, and if we are using Cushitherm pipe supports, the top edge of this insulation should line up perfectly with the edge of the upside down unistrut we will be mounting to. So let's select one of these two yellow points. It doesn't matter which one. For the green point, we want to make sure the top edge of the insulation here clears the truss or sprinkler or whatever it is we're trying to go around. So let's select this green reference point that is along this edge. Now that we've got the reference point selected, we can switch from selecting the reference points to changing the dimensional values by clicking Dimensions. Notice how you can toggle back and forth between selecting the reference points and editing the dimension values. You'll notice we have three different dimensions shown. The V stands for the vertical distance between the two points. The H stands for the horizontal distance between the two points. And the D stands for the direct, straight line, shortest distance between the two points. You'll also notice the lines have different colors. This cayenne blue color indicates the priority dimension, meaning that if other aspects of the tube layout change, such as changing tube size or insulation thickness, then this direct dimension will attempt to remain unchanged, but the other two dimensions are free to change. Yellow colored dimensions indicate that they can be set to the priority dimension. If you see a red dimension, this indicates it cannot be set to the priority dimension. A situation where a red dimension line would occur is if this bend was a 90 degree, and thus putting this segment perfectly vertical. In this case, the horizontal dimension would be red as the horizontal distance can't change. This segment can only move up or down with no way to move sideways. In our example scenario, we want to edit this vertical dimension. Editing a dimensional value can be done one of two ways. The first is to simply click on the dimension you would like to change and make the priority. The other way is to click on Edit and select the dimension up top that you would like to change the value of and make the priority. In this case, we'll go with vertical. Let's say we measured the vertical distance from the unistrut on the ceiling to the bottom of our obstacle, and the measurement came out to be 8 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. We don't want the insulation touching the obstacle, so let's add 1 inch for additional clearance. This gives us a desired dimension of 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we'll enter 9 for the inches, 3 in the fraction field, and change the fraction from eighths to sixteenths. There we have 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Also, if you happen to know the decimal, as would be the case with 9 and a half inches, you could also simply enter 9.5 in the inches and leave the fraction field blank. When done, click Edit Segment to implement these changes. You can now see the vertical dimension has the cayenne blue color indicating it as the priority, and the value has updated to 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Press Return to return to the main tube layout screen. Next, let's say we measured our obstacle's width to be 1 and a half feet. We'll need to edit the third segment to clear this obstacle. Be sure to click on the straight line section. Clicking on an elbow will bring up the option to edit the elbow's angle or orientation. 
Let's select this yellow point and this green point. Now that we've got our reference point selected, let's click Dimensions to change the values. In this case, it doesn't matter if we have the direct dimension or the horizontal dimension as the priority. They will both yield the same result. Again, we can either click on the dimension or click on Edit down below. Now we can either enter 1.5 feet or 1 foot and 6 inches. The only difference is how the dimension shows up on the screen. Press Return to return to the main tube layout screen. Next, we want to stretch the fourth segment so that the first and last segments are back in line with each other. There are a couple of ways to do this. First is the basic method, which is the same as we did for the second segment, by selecting these two reference points and setting the vertical dimension to 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Here, you can see the segments are in line with each other. Before showing the second method, let's highlight another feature. If we go back and edit the dimensions of the fourth segment, you'll notice we can set the dimension to the minimum. This will return the straight segment to its shortest possibility. If you try to enter a value smaller than the minimum, a red message will appear below to let you know a value must be entered that is greater than or equal to the minimum. We'll set it back to the minimum and press Edit Segment. You can see the fourth segment has shrunk back to where we started. The second method to align the first and last segments is a bit of a nice trick. Let's instead use the yellow reference point over here. We want the vertical dimension as our priority, and let's set the value to zero. Again, this brings them back in line, but with an added advantage. Let's say we made a mistake and need to add three inches to the value of the second dimension. After updating, you'll notice the first and last segments are still in line with each other. Because of how we referenced the fourth segment, it automatically adjusts to be the same as the second segment. If we stuck with the first method, we would have had to remember to also update the fourth segment. Last thing for us to do is stretch the first and last segments to be whatever we need them to be. Let's say we know the horizontal distance we need between the end of the tube and the right side of our obstacle. We could select this yellow reference point and leave the green reference point as is. Let's edit the horizontal dimension to, well, let's say we needed it to be 4 feet 5 and a quarter inches. Stretching our final segment, the one on the far left, is going to bring up a limitation of the current app. We do plan to fix this in an update coming soon, but it's something we'll have to deal with for now. Let's take another look at the reference points available for the final segment. Notice how we have access to dimensions to all of the possible reference points preceding the segment we are editing. Now let's take a look at the reference points available for the first segment. There aren't very many. To gain a better understanding of the current limitation, let's take a look at the references available to the third segment. We have every yellow dot we could want and need, but the green dots are limited to the first bend after the segment being edited. Again, an update coming soon will allow every green dot we could want or need to be referenceable. Back to our first segment. For this example, Let's select the reference points that allow us to control the length of the straight section of the tubing before the bend starts. I'll just use a length of 6 feet. Next step is to review all of our dimensions and confirm they are indeed the dimensions we want.
In the top right, let's also ensure our total unbent tube length is less than or equal to 19 feet, as this is the available length of RefTech's bendable quality copper tubing. When ready to start bending, click Finish. From this screen, it's important to review all of the information at the top of the screen. For using the input angles for the digibender, it's important to note these calculations that determine 46 degrees are based on H55 copper with ACR type L dimensions. Thinner or thicker tubing, as well as different materials, will not be able to use these calculated input angles that account for springback of the tubing. Future versions of the app might add options to select other material types and wall thicknesses, but for now, all the distance calculations will be correct for different materials and wall thicknesses. Just remember that the input angle will not be correct. From this point, RefTech's training video for bending will walk you through how to take the results output from the bending app to create the bent tubing in real life. Let's return to the tube layout screen. If this is a project where another smaller tube is being run in parallel, we can now reduce the tube size and change the insulation thickness. Let's go with 3 quarter inch tubing and 1 inch insulation thickness. If everything was properly dimensioned in a real world manner for the larger tube, the smaller tube should be dimensioned the same and be immediately ready for the results page. Let's review. Looks good. Now onto the results page and then the actual bending. To cover all our bases, I'd like to talk about one more feature. Real quick, I'm just going to reset most of these dimensions to their minimums to make it easier to see. All right, let's take a look at this fourth segment where we are interested in making the vertical dimension our priority. When the segment is at its minimum, the vertical dimension is roughly 8.6 inches. If we try to enter a larger number, we get an error message. So it looks like we can enter values from 0 to 8.6 inches, with 0 bringing us back to parallel. But what do we do if we actually want the right side to be higher than the left side by, say, 10 inches? Well, here's how you do it. Go back to editing the dimension values, use an acceptable value less than or equal to the minimum, and click on Flip. Notice how the direction arrow went from pointing down to pointing up. This means our dimension is now above the yellow reference point. We can go ahead and enter 10 inches and click Edit Segment. Look at that. The right side is now 10 inches higher than the left side. If you want to bring it back to being lower, edit the dimension, click Flip, and then click Edit Segment. That's it for this training video, but please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, find any bugs, or have any suggestions for future releases. Thank you for watching.